even at this late date, I'm surprised at the extent to which Democratic leadership enables and emboldens Trump and the Republicans. But nonetheless, here we are. So this is from Ryan Grimm of The Intercept, and he says the following. The rogue deployment of secret federal police forces in Portland, Oregon, has added a new complication to negotiations over reauthorization, re, excuse me, reauthorizing the Trump administration's vast surveillance powers and app appropriating new money for the Department of Homeland Security. In March, a sweeping set of government authorities to monitor people in the United States expired, and Congress continues to debate what limits should be put on such powers before reauthorizing them. And the House is debating its next DHS funding bill with the Congressional Progressive Caucus pushing leadership not to bring it up for a vote given Trump's abuse of power and DHS agents' role in a Portland arrest. House Democratic leaders, however, are considering lumping in DHS funding with appropriations for the Departments of Labor and Health and Human Services, making it far more difficult for progressive Democrats to oppose. Representative Pramila Jayapal said the Congressional Progressive Caucus is urging leadership either not, either to not bring up the bill at all or to break it off from labor and HHS and allow for a separate vote. So let me put that in layman's terms for you. Democratic leadership is trying to guarantee continued funding for the Department of Homeland Security and increased spying powers for Trump. The Department of Homeland Security was just involved in this insane scandal where they're, they're the agency that has these federal agents that are in the streets of Portland illegally arresting people. It's the Department of Homeland Security, it's Border Patrol, and they're basically acting as a paramilitary wing of the Trump administration where he's ordered federal agents into Portland and he's threatening to deploy them elsewhere too. And they don't have the authorization for this. He's doing it by saying, I signed an executive order that punishes vandalizing statues and monuments up to 10 years. So he's sending them in. This is against the wishes of the states and it's against the wishes of the cities. You have the politicians there. You have the police officers there who are like, whoa, 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 we, we don't want this. But he sent them there. Again, they're not, they're in like unmarked vehicles. They're not clearly showing who they are. They're dressed in camouflage. Federal agent thug goons arresting people illegally, willy-nilly in violation of the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Now, if you had an opposition party that was worth a goddamn, what would they do? Oh, we're going to cut funding to the DHS. Oh, you need to re-up the funding for it? That's nice. What if we don't do that? Hey, like them apples. Oh, I guess, sorry, I guess we couldn't fund your paramilitary squad of goons who's illegally locking people up. My bad. What else would you do if you were actually resisting Donald Trump? Oh, shit, we've re-upped the Patriot Act a number of times. We've expanded his spying powers a number of times, even when... The country was at a fever pitch calling Trump a Manchurian candidate of Vladimir Putin. If he's a Manchurian candidate of Vladimir Putin, why are you giving him extra spying powers? Well, now, Democratic leadership, what are they doing? They're saying, oh my God, we have some, you know, rowdy, loudmouth, lefty politicians who are saying, hey, maybe let's not fund these paramilitary squads, the DHS paramilitary squads, and maybe let's stop Trump's ability to have expanded authorization for spying. And Nancy Pelosi is gaslighting the Progressive Caucus and saying, let's try to find a way to guarantee that the Department of Homeland Security gets their funding and Trump has the ability to do the spy. Remind me again who Nancy Pelosi's working for? Remind me again who Chuck Schumer's working for? See, this is what we mean, guys. They are neoliberal corporatists. They are status quo defenders. They are Republican light. That's what they are. They agree with them on so much more. They would rather snub the Progressive Caucus, put their middle finger up to them, and put their middle finger up to the country than do the right thing. Which is why we still haven't had a vote on Medicare for All, even though an overwhelming majority of Democrats want it, and a majority of the country wants it. There's even one poll where it's a majority of Republicans who want Medicare for All. No vote on it. 
It polls amazingly. It's the solution in the middle of a pandemic. And instead, they don't have a vote on that, but they want to expand COBRA subsidies, which is just a giant giveaway to the health insurance companies. This is what you get from these people. This is what you get from Democratic leadership. This is enabling and emboldening to the max. And I don't see this is what pisses me off more than anything. You have these casual observers of politics who see Nancy Pelosi do her cutesy little thing where she ripped up Trump's speech or or the condescending clap that she did. And they go, oh, my God, yes, slay queen. Yes, queen slay. Yes. Show him momentary disrespect with symbolism and go back to doing every single thing he ever wanted. Yes, this is resistance. And that's what pisses me off is that. People don't, they don't know the specifics. They don't read the details. They don't follow this stuff as closely as Ryan Grimm does and The Intercept does. They don't know the ins and outs like we do in the story I'm telling you right now. What percentage of the American people know this story I just told you right now? So there's this myth created around her. This total myth about how, you know, she's a resistance hero. She's standing up to Trump. She's enabling him on all of the substantive stuff. The only way that they'll ever take him on is symbolically. That's it. They have little disagreements here and there when it comes to policy. But on many of the big ticket items like this, a continued authoritarian crackdown and increased spying, she's like, this is business as usual. Let's let's get this through. I don't want the annoying whiny progressives to make a stink over rank authoritarianism. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. And here we are. Pathetic. Pathetic. This is the dynamic that we see in this country. The Republicans move further and further and further right, and the Democrats keep meeting them halfway and going further right as well. So now we have a far-right party and a center-right party. Those are your two options.